Please be advised, all music tracks used in this production are sole property of Kelson Communications and are original compositions. Thank you. To everyone tuning in, welcome. This is Silas, your e-journalism social work advocate. You're listening to the Kelson on the Air Social Work Podcast, the program that promotes, celebrates, uplifts, and highlights the social work profession. This podcast aims to educate the general public to the vital contributions professional social workers make in every aspect of society every day. Hello, everyone. This is Silas, your e-journalism social work advocate, host of the award-winning Kelson on the Air Social Work Podcast, produced by Kelson Communications Incorporated. Last year, in October of 2020, I had the honor and privilege of being one of 15 social workers chosen nationally as the 2020-2021 Network for Social Work Management Policy Fellow. It was a 10-month research program. The culmination was a final presentation of each fellow's research findings. The series is entitled Raise the Wage, the Case for Equitable Pay for Social Workers and Other Human Service Professionals. Up next will be Dr. Mildred C. Joyner. She's an LCSW and president of the National Association of Social Workers. She's also the inaugural John E. and Barbara S. Jacob Distinguished Endowed Professor. So welcome, everyone. Today we have a very special guest with us, and I'm very honored and thrilled to have with us Dr. Mildred. C. Joyner. Uh, she's a doctor of professional studies and also a MSW and a licensed clinical social worker. But more importantly than all of that, in my opinion, she is the president of the National Association of Social Workers, which has 55 chapters throughout the United States and its territories. Welcome to this very special uh, recording, Dr. Joyner. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. I'm, I'm so, so, um, Honored to be a part of your guest, and I'm looking thank, forward to this uh, thank you. time together. Thank you. And thank you for inviting me. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, your your reputation precedes you, and you came highly recommended by several of my other um, individuals that I've been interacting with. So I feel it's an honor and a pleasure. So thank you. Sure. So we 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 chatted pre- briefly before. And, you know, you have such a you know wider array of experience in the social work profession. So um, can you just highlight for our viewers and listeners the, the breadth and depth of social work and social workers in all the different areas that we um, that we perform and work in? Well, you know, social workers are everywhere. And, and my favorite line is, if you live long enough, you will access a social worker. Um, so social workers are in the helping profession, as we know, but they also are presidents of colleges. They also um, are in the public sector. They work at the NFL. They work at the NBA. So anywhere there are people, there are usually a social worker. Uh, some don't always use their term social worker. They'll use is another term. But but really and truly, we are a profession that helps people where they are navigate systems uh, mm-hmm. and help people live up to their fullest potential. Uh, we are we are not a, a profession that tries to change people. We accept people for who they are and where they are mm-hmm. and deal with whatever struggles they may be having in life. And that is why that that saying that I say, if you live long enough, you'll access a social worker. Um, Social workers are in the field of, you know, the academy. There's social workers there. There's school social workers. There are social workers in daycare. Um, There are social workers in the mental health setting. Our largest, um, the largest person who hires the most social workers is the VA. So there's Mm -hmm. social workers throughout the VA. Um, But as I also said there, I, I served on a bank. Uh, bank board, and I was a social worker at the bank. So um, it, 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 it was there helping people learn how to get mortgages and how to access and understand the banking system. So we're mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm glad you brought up all those different areas that we perform in. So in your opinion, since we are everywhere and we, and we do interact with all the different systems and groups and people and individuals, um, why, 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 do, why does not this, the profession get it's due recognition, you know, to put it plainly. 
Well, A, the profession is young. You know, we're not as lo- old as law and we're not as, lo- as old as medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, and because we are a profession where I said everyone does not utilize their acronyms. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes people will take what they learn and then all of a sudden they'll be the, the president of a college and you'll never hear that they were a social worker until <laughs> one day they say, oh, yeah, I was a social worker. I mean, we have social workers who are on the Hill. I think we yes. have a job to do um, because we are everywhere we tend not to promote ourselves and that is mm-hmm. something that we have to learn to do is what yes. is social workers mm-hmm. uh, you know we've been tagged as in the child welfare workers as one who snatches children away mm-hmm. which was not really true I mean when you mm-hmm. look at it there was an evolution of social work we've been tagged with when there was welfare is giving out welfare so we've mm-hmm. always been there but we have have been the undermine of our our welfare of this nation to protect the welfare of this nation so you don't always hear like a lot of times people didn't realize that Whitney Young was a social worker and he mm-hmm. advised three presidents and was mm-hmm. there uh, one of the chief architects of the March on Washington and, mm-hmm. and really helped get the Voting Rights Act passed. So uh, Dorothy Height was a social worker. So when you begin to look at where we were, uh, we very rarely ever promote ourselves as social workers. That's what I'm trying to change. I think what happens, however, is anytime there is a crisis, um, social work is called upon. And and this apocalypse that we're living right now is indeed a, a... a apocalypse. You know, we have racial equity yes. that we're fighting for, economic justice because mm-hmm. so many people lost jobs, environmental justice because the tornadoes and the hurricanes are, are just happening in our nation, throughout our nation. And then there's the healthcare crisis that we're in and helping people navigate that. Mm-hmm. This could actually be, to me, I tell everybody, this could be a social work renaissance yes. because anytime you have tragedy, you usually have a time when people are leaning on on people more. Mm -hmm. And so we have to really be um, strategic about how we promote ourselves as far as a profession um, Mm -hmm. and work with other professionals. Other professionals now want social workers at the table. Um, Before, they didn't even know we exist. But they, Mm -hmm. when you're out there and you're holding the hands of someone who's dying of COVID, um, when you're checking on kids who are alone in a house during COVID, Mm -hmm. uh, people realize we need social workers. And I think you hear the Biden-Harris administration talk about the need for social workers more and more. It helps that Joe Biden's daughter is a social worker. So she kind of understands what we do. Mm -hmm. But if you even listen to his um, words, he he often talks about the dignity and worth of the individual. Mm -hmm. And that is, of course, a core value of social work. So Yes, yes, absolutely. And, And one of the things that you had mentioned that, you know, we need to tell our stories more and more effectively. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that you think that we as a profession can be better at that? Because one of the things that I've heard is that one of the reasons why we don't get recognition is because we go about our doing our jobs quietly and unassumingly. um, And we don't really, you know, I don't want to use the term to our own horn, but we don't really publicize what we do. Right. Well, you know, I've always said that. I mean, I think we have to, when when there are crises, we have to make sure that from CNN to Fox, no social workers who can speak on issues that are happening mm. in the community. Often we're not yeah. we're not brought on to those news panels about what is happening, on, you know, when George Floyd was murdered. We were mm. not, um, even now in the George Floyd um, was murdered and now we see Chauvin's trial and a lot mm. of re-traumas trauma is occurring to a lot of people. We should be on some of those platforms telling people what's happening. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, uh, as far as school reopening, where teachers don't want to go back to school, the kids are afraid that they might give COVID to their parents, the social worker is there. So Mm -hmm. we try to, um, at least at the national office, really promote ourselves with legislators and letting them know what social workers are doing. But I actually host uh, Essential Chats with Mitt, and the next Essential Chat with Mitt is with the media. And we're mm-hmm. going to have a couple of people who write in Hollywood, write stories, mm-hmm. um, and make sure that the stories that they tell that include a social worker are accurate. accurate. Right? Yes, uh, yes. So that's one thing that we're trying to change the direct trajectory of. And another is those that write documentaries, that they, they write documentaries about what we do. Mm-hmm. So we have to break into those systems 
And, you know, I, I am uh, the John and Barbara Jacob Distinguished Professor at, at yes. Howard. And mm-hmm. that's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to look at social work leaders. Right. Social mm-hmm. justice leadership uh, and begin to look at those areas, and those systems where we don't see ourselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, earlier, I we kind of talked about the fact that I served as a bank director, mm-hmm. there, you know, and, and how I got on as a bank director was just having a talk about how that bank could go out in the community and help the community. And then mm-hmm. the person that I was with, you know, kind of talked to the CEO and the CEO said, we need you on our board. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then I changed a lot of people on the board about what is the role of social work. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and how do you go out and do lending and where can you go to the Latino community? Do we have people who are selling uh, mortgages that can speak Spanish to to Mm. be able to help the enterprise. Mm -hmm. And so I think we have to get in those systems and then promote them, you know, and we cannot have a divorce between the public and the private sector. I think sometimes we fall in those wars, you know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, social workers are in the public sector. They're in the private sector. They're in the prof and the Mm non-prof. And we should talk about corporate America. Uh, I just recently uh, said, you know, I'm really kind of proud of the M you know, major league baseball for taking out the all-star game. That's the social justice. They took action. Right. Um, And so we shouldn't be afraid to say that we should be hashtagging all along social work supports the mlb right you know mm-hmm. uh, they did what was necessary when the nfl did the kaepernick and and you know kind of divorced him we were very loud about that's horrible you know mm-hmm. but we so we have to celebrate when people make progress um, yes and we need social workers in the media you know yes. i would love to see a journalistic social worker right mm-hmm. so we need to talk about how we can get uh and go into those systems and spread good stories which is a little bit about what um, John Jackson, Dr. John Jackson at the Annenberg School uh, of Communication at Penn. Penn well, he yes. used to be the um, he used to be the dean at the School of Social Policy mm-hmm. and had the social and social work was his role. Well, now he tells a lot of document that he does documentaries. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you look at his work, a lot of it comes from the heart of the people. So yes. uh, engaging with our schools of communication and mm-hmm. bringing on interns from the school of communication into social work arena. Yes, um, yes, critical, absolutely. Right? Right. Absolutely. So. That's, that's one of the, 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 the points that you made is one of the things that, you know, I think would really be beneficial if in a lot of the universities, as you said, you bring together the communications department and and the social work department and let them intermingle because Mm -hmm. the communications department knows how to tell the story. The social workers know what the story is and they can educate each other. And and so uh, another thing that that, that I've I've, I've noticed and you just hit on, somebody goes to school, they get their four-year degree, they have MSW, they take their, they take their test, they become an LMSW, um, maybe they go on and get the LCSW, and then they, they, they identify themselves as a social worker. But then when they get to CEO and executive director, like you said, all of a sudden, they stop identifying themselves as social workers. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the, the areas that, that many in uh, social work and especially NASW um, is working really hard to do is to get, is to change the conception or the perception, I should say, that you know s- social workers can't make uh, an equitable um, living. Right. And like you said, if someone r- rises up to a CEO and they have a social work degree, they should say that they're an executive exactly. director who's a exactly. social worker. Right. And 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 if they were to do that more. Do you think that would change the perception in the public side? Because they see an executive director or CEO and they kind of know or they kind of figure they're making, you know, high 90s, maybe six figures, but they don't equate that with someone that has a social work degree. Right. So do you- uh, Yeah, you know, that whole study uh, is a very hard, I mean, NASW and CSWE were trying to, to get a workforce study and it's really hard to get the, the real data mm-hmm. because you, you, you get your regular child welfare worker and your mental health worker, but you're right, those that go off into the private sector. I mm-hmm. mean, le- I'm gonna be real honest, professors, you know, you can have some professors who make a lower, 
Uh, mm -hmm. But there are some professors that make great six figures, right? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, and I often say when my students would always say, oh, well, we're not going to make any. And I, I'd always look at myself and I'm like, well, but, you know, I'm a social worker and mm -hmm. I make Westchester University plays at the top of the scale in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. You know, so we make good money. And then social workers also can do consulting and they pick up their, their money there. Mm -hmm. uh, there are social workers who are CEOs and, yes. you know, there are people i mean when you even look at child welfare in, at least in my state but sometimes people get hooked in there because mm -hmm. they do go up high right? Mm -hmm. uh, right if you're in the va you're on the gs scale right mm -hmm. so you you make a pretty good dollar mm -hmm. um we, I, I love the fact that the biden administration has hired some social workers all of them are heading departments yes. uh, so you know we, we shouldn't we shouldn't, I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't focus on uplifting our salaries um, mm -hmm. as all professions do. I think nursing, they're a really good job of uplifting themselves. And I think we need more lobbying around what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even in the last bill that was for the stimulus bill, the schools were told to have more social workers and I, and we advocate, okay, but you, you need to say how much they should get paid. Right. Mm. Uh, so we have to understand that in order to bring up that you have to have people at the table for policy. Yes. Like, so what's the bottom line that you're going to pay for social workers being there. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so that's why we need social workers on the micro meso and the macro levels of practice. But um you know, look, I, I tell people in the not for profit world and, and in mental health, yes, there's probably where our lowest salaries are mm -hmm. and we need to raise those salaries. Um, but I also say that there are some social workers who make a whole lot of money um mm. and there's ways to be money and some people will argue like you don't want to have two or three jobs but and that's true but but when you look at lawyers they teach in law school to supplement mm -hmm. right you mm -hmm. know right. so so a lot of professions do that i mean yes. doctors do that so mm -hmm. how do you how do you segue and how do we charge people for what we do too often mm. social workers do things for free yes um, you know <laughs> uh, i remember when i was doing training for um race relation training Training, and I put a someone asked me to submit a proposal, a, an insurance company. And I put it in and he said, one of the people that were reviewing, he said, put in another one. You're not asking for enough money. Mm -hmm. If you don't ask for enough money, they're going to think that you're not able to do what you're able to do. Mm -hmm. And it was the very first time like, okay, what is my worth? Right. And I yes. submitted another pr proposal. They accepted mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it gave me like, huh, you know, I don't, I'm not looking at my worth, right? Mm -hmm. We're just looking at it. Well, if it's going to help, oh, sure, I'll go in and do a training and, and tell people why diversity and race relations matters in the workforce. But this is something that people pay for. Um, so yes. we should learn what mm -hmm. our worth is and then promote our worth. Mm -hmm. And then what about, um, I've, I've many often times heard, and I've said myself that, you can't measure the impact that a social worker can have on, on the life of an individual, especially when, when we talk about the child welfare system, social workers interceding at that very early age and stage, and the impact that that could have in changing the whole trajectory of not only that individual's life at, at, a, at an infant stage, but also the family, supporting the family. And that's one of the things that I think um, that we miss in telling our story is the impact. And so what do you think would be the best way to get people who have been helped tremendously by social workers who have gone on to be successful? How do you think is the best way to get them to come and tell their story? Well, you know, there, there's some that do. I mean, if you look at Tiffany Haddish, she does mm -hmm. that. If you look at my friend, Steve Pemberton, who was abused in mm -hmm. the system, mm -hmm. he tells a very good season, you know, works for Fortune 500 companies. I think there are some that tell their stories. I think that what social workers need to do is we do not honor those who make impact, you know? I mean, mm. so, so how do we honor people, you know, who are just doing great, great things in the social work world? Like, mm. like, you know, I was on a call 
and, and this young man by the name of Hunter Beaton has um, him and his mother. His mother was a foster parent. He noticed that all the kids that moved in always brought a trash bag. And at the age of five, it had an impact on him. Why are you all bringing your clothes in trash bags? Don't you have a suitcase? Mm. Uh, and he would say to his mother, but they're not trash. So mm. even though Hunter is not a social worker, he's at the University of Austin right now. I mm. think he might move to communication. We're trying to recruit him. But he started a foundation to give bags. It's called Day One Bags. Mm. So if you're moving, uh, a foster child is moving, he wanted them to have a bag. Mm. Well, you know, matter of fact, he just sent me three boxes because he was on my show. And I told him I would get some to the local child welfare agency here where I live. Mm -hmm. Um we need to honor people that are doing something like that. You know, yes, award yes. shows go out and they honor people. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Stacey Abrams. She, she, mm -hmm. she really made sure and lived up to that everybody has one vote. And she mm -hmm. did it through an equitable model. She didn't say register to vote if you're a Democrat and don't if you're a Republican. Mm -hmm. Everybody, she was, she should. She should be award. She did social work, right? Yes. Um, so how do we begin to bring more people into our circle? Mm -hmm. and recognize yes. more people mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. sometimes we only recognize each other mm -hmm. and we all know what each what we do yes. but uh, and then other people come up with shows that recognize people who are doing social work. I was watching the SB Awards with sports. And, mm -hmm. you know, again, I'm a sports fanatic, but I would say that LeBron James deserves a social work award. He built a school. Yes, He's doing yes. things for voting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Seth Curry started for underserved kids to play, able to play golf. I mm -hmm. mean, these are people who are high level people, but they're making an impact. Yes. And mm -hmm. we as a profession are the only ones that can really know how to evaluate how that impact, impact. Yes, helps absolutely. the community, right? Yes. And so why not reward those people? Why keep it? Why let everybody else do that, right? Exactly. Why not exactly. have some of these uh, nice charitable, you know, awards where we can get and, and raise dollars because I'm looking mm -hmm. at it from a financial standpoint that would pay into a foundation mm -hmm. so that we could send more kids, send more people to school to become social workers. Yes. You know, there, there's ways that we have to do that. Um, we we have, I, I, I think a lot of times people do not think that social work is a business. Mm, yes. And so they, 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 and I don't say that in a callous way, they don't run it like a business. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, we do a lot of good people. Yes. We need to shout it to the rooftop of promote the promote that. that exactly. Do, right? Yes. We need to go on the hill and testify mm -hmm. when we and say the bill that you passed does not work because I work with the community and it doesn't get down to the community and, and, and be a leverage of changing that. Mm -hmm. um, we need to go to the TV shows and when they put a social worker on television, say, so we don't do that. Mm, you know, and to tell that story. So, yes. you know, we have to be everywhere. We have to, we have to promote ourselves about the good that we do. And that's why I say it's a renaissance time. This is yes. a time mm -hmm. when uh, I think more social workers this year being shuttered in and how do I still perform services? And they did it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be up to organizations like NASW to tell those stories and to yes. get those stories out there. Absolutely. And uh, one of the stories that uh, NASW told, which was very powerful and very moving, uh, was about uh, at the height of the pandemic, um, there were two social workers that got highlighted that were going out in the community and locating the kids who weren't zooming in to their class lessons and they were going to check on them. And sometimes they found them being, like you said, being left alone mm -hmm. or, or not having the technology. Right. And so th those are the types of things. Um, now, when it comes to the schools, um, I know you've been working with uh, Council on Social Work Education and there's starting to be a big push to go into the high schools and start talking to the high school students about the profession of social work and why it's a, a great and equitable choice. Um, how, how do you think that could help with the this new need that's going to come up in the next 10 to 15 years based on uh, the pandemic? Because they're saying that the profession is going to grow incrementally great and we need to make sure that there's a steady flow of new social workers. Now, going into the high schools, how do you think that could impact that whole process. Well, uh, you know, when I was uh, director of a program here in Westchester, we not only went into the high schools, I think it's really where middle school is where it all begins. That's Ooh. where people want to um, 
really, really where that passion comes from, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and grow that passion. I think that, that the way to build on that is to use your schools of social work, especially on the baccalaureate level, their social work clubs mm -hmm. and get their social work clubs to adopt schools mm -hmm. in the area. We did that at Westchester. We mm -hmm. adopted we went into the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. We, you know, one of one of our students did some research and realized that there were not enough Big Brothers and Big Sisters to go around here in Chester County. And so there were a bunch of kids that were called unassigned littles, you know, that there was nobody to assign them to. And it bothered her. So what we did as the social work department, we adopted all the unassigned littles. We would take mm. them, got the university to allow them to come to basketball games and our students in social work club would take them to the games to do different activities around the university so that they had activities to do. There's mm. a lot of ways. I went into high schools all the time and talked uh, on career day and um, even went to some of the middle schools. I made sure that we got a scholarship. I helped, I went to someone in our town town that um was was vain enough that he liked things named after him so we uh <laughs> we named some scholarship awards after him mm -hmm. but they went to high school students in the area because a lot of times when people get scholarship money it's not from social work it's from other groups right for mm -hmm. pre-law or pre this right so we we have to do that we have to model that same thing you know um and and it works you know mm -hmm. i i um you know, I think we have to, you know, social work sometimes can be so closed. We mm. only want people who have degrees to be a part, right? Mm. But how do you open it up and build a longer table? How do you take down all of these silos and these walls mm. and build a longer table? And I see that the longer table starts really with um, middle school, mm -hmm. then high schoolers, you know, so they could be like pre-social work, stupid, whatever, we could come up with some name. Mm -hmm. Community colleges, we know that a lot of people go to community colleges, yes. they segue over to the baccalaureate program. Mm -hmm. So how do we build that trajectory mm -hmm. and have activities? And I, I think it's doable. Uh, we have a lot of energy around that because we have students who generally are in social work clubs or looking for internships. So how yes. do you do a creative internship where you you work with different high schools and mm -hmm. middle schools, right? I mean, yes. CSWE is willing to and has, you know, accepted all kind of internships. I think sometimes we ourselves box us into mm. it has to be this way. Well, that's mm -hmm. not true. I was president of CSWE. Um, I, I know how you have to follow a model. I always say it's like a rubber band. You can't break it. But it can mm -hmm. be flexible as all get out. You just have right. to be creative about mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay. And um, le leading up to the next question, um, I, I, I see that you're very passionate about the profession. Um, but in general, you know what what is your passion? I know well, social work, the big picture, but. Well, when, when, you know, A, I became a social worker because my mother made me um, volunteer at a hospital because she didn't think I knew early enough in life what my purpose was. And I happened mm. to see a, a, a social worker at the hospital when there was a horrible accident. And I saw the way that they took charge and kind of compartmentalize the problem a child was hit and was had died um and where they were putting the parents where were they were hit it, it just was like wow they just cleaned this all up it's a horrible thing but they did it in a way that they partialized the problem so to speak mm -hmm. that when i came home that day i and i don't know if that person ever realized it my mother knew her mother but um i wanted to be a social worker right mm -hmm. then when i went to howard university um I was in line at that time you were allowed to get food stamps as students and I was in mm -hmm. line to get food stamps. Someone was ahead of me in line, a, a older adult, um, but she could not read. And mm -hmm. when the social worker came to help her, you know, she was very embarrassed, but told him, mm -hmm. I can't write this out. You know, I need your help. I can't read. And social worker was one of those social workers was, was negative and said, well, we don't do that. You need to bring somebody here that can, um, write out the application. And the woman was almost in tears. Mm -hmm. I stepped out of line and said, you know what? I'll help you. If you mm -hmm. have, she had all the paperwork in a sack mm -hmm. and they called me out of line after that. They asked me who I was. And I kind of told them what my name was. And I was going to make sure when I mm -hmm. graduated that I came back and took their job because that's not what a social worker does. Right. Mm -hmm. So what 
I, but when we graduated from Howard, everyone had to take a pledge. And it was the med school, the law school, the dent school, every school, as well as undergrad. We all took one pledge. You know, it was just a commitment that, that Howard made everybody go through. You know, it was mm -hmm. the bidding ceremony and then mm -hmm. the pledge after your um, four years. And our class pledge was to eliminate racism in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, you take the pledge to get your degree and get, go home. But Race equity has always, in social justice, has been the core of everything that I've done. Mm -hmm. If you read any of my speeches, mm -hmm. if you look at any of my work, anything I engage in, I have always talked about social justice mm -hmm. and working with the community and treating mm -hmm. all people equitably. Yes. So that is the passion that I have. Um, mm -hmm. And I, it continues to burn because I have two grandsons. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that this world is one that where they feel liberated and mm -hmm. they have some source of equity, but it is the core of what social workers were all about. You know, child yes. of the seventies, I watched the civil rights movement, could never really understand why people didn't like one another based on the color of one skin, mm -hmm. never really understood about sexual orientation and sexual identification, why people pointed their fingers at people who identified different from them, just never understood why people just didn't accept people. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is the passion that keeps burning in me. OK. All right. Well, thank you so much for that. And then to to, to wrap it up, uh, if you were going to recruit somebody to come into this profession, what would you say? I would say, A, are they committed to the social work code of ethics? Mm -hmm. uh, are they committed to working in community? Mm -hmm. uh, no matter where you see yourself as a social worker, you can't just use the books and make recommendations. Mm -hmm. I'm a community-based social worker. What does the community want, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how do they want to be served? Uh, I would say to people, you, you know, once you are a social worker, don't marry your job. Look for opportunities. Mm -hmm. Far too often people come in and they don't see the pathways mm -hmm. where you can go as social workers. So uh, going back to Caduceus, staff development, right? Supervision and staff development. I think every social worker needs to always evaluate either every year or every couple of years, how long am I going to stay in this position and where do I see myself going? So mm -hmm. part of what I always say is how do you take your lofty goal, eliminate racism, in your lifetime and how do you get to it right mm -hmm. you know and if it's just doing the same job over and over again you get bored mm -hmm. anybody doing a mechanic get I mean, you get bored the mm -hmm. beautiful thing of social work is no no two days yeah, are ever yeah. the same that's, that's why true. a lot of people come into it uh but you know when a, some when you see a supervisor's job open up apply for it Mm -hmm. When you see an agency starting in, an, in, in the next town, starting something that you really like, go for it, mm -hmm. right? Um, don't be afraid to lead that thing you know how to navigate well. You have the skills. It's not imposter syndrome. We mm -hmm. have skills that we use. Mm -hmm. We apply those skills and those theories and they work. And I think sometimes we just don't look at, we, we marry our jobs, um, we go in it and we're like, oh, there's nowhere to go. I can't make enough money. Well, if you're not making money there, where where can you make money? Go to the VA, right? You know, go to the VA, apply to the VA, do whatever you need to do to give you more of an income and and, um, and look at the path. Go back to school and get your degree. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the beautiful part of social work is we have networks. It's yes. you know, somebody that knows somebody. Use those networks, right? Mm -hmm. Advance yourself. I, I think because we work for people, we don't ever, we forget about working for ourselves, that self-care thing. Another thing I always tell people, and people laugh, don't marry a social worker. You don't want to eat, sleep, and drink our profession all the time. Right? <laughs> you need self-care, right? And, 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 I mean, I used to laugh but because we, at children and youth, when I first started there, they had a baseball team. And they, then they had a band. And I was like, I don't want to hang with you guys all day and then go hang with you at night. I don't want to do that. I need to go talk to somebody else because it's all you do is talk about work, right? When you're, yeah. when you're hanging mm -hmm. with the same. So, so do things that are different. And um, 
and, and to remember that you're going, I want people who go, will go into a profession understanding that it is a lifestyle that they're going to enjoy, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, you don't, it's not a William Ryan, blame the victim. Right. It, it is not a thing of, oh, I got to, I got to abandon social work because I can't make any money. It mm -hmm. is, where can I go? How do I keep uplifting myself? And how do I climb those crystal stairs? I think mm -hmm. that that's, it, and if people are passionate, Yes. I love it. Right. You know, mm -hmm. it, it is the person who's, you know, if, if they tell me it's all I want to do is uh, see clients and have a private practice. I, I know that there are a lot of social workers who do that and I don't mm -hmm. disrespect that, but that's not all you do. You mm -hmm. know, even if you have a private practice, your job is still how do you make the system better? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, um, you could be a psychologist where it's all you do is sit back and listen to people in their story. But you chose social work and social work is social justice. It yes. is not something, you know, people get that wrong where they're like, well, you know, I don't want to practice the social justice part of it. it, it you, that's there's no that such thing, right? That's like being a doctor and saying, I don't, I don't want, want to, to practice, practice medicine. medicine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you, you can't do that. And, um, you know, so so if you're passionate about making this world better mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, of course, we'll never, ever be perfect. Mm -hmm. But if, if, it's, if we can get and convince people that people have the right to live up to their fullest potential, mm -hmm. you have helped maybe one more person that nobody else would help. Right. Yes. And when you said that question about, I mean, I have a cup that I keep here on my desk that a foster, that a child who was in a group home gave me. But every day being a professor, I have students who come back and I see what they're doing. And it's just like, my heart is so warm mm -hmm. because you're a part of people's lives and they go on. Right. Um, and people come back and they say, you've made an impact. And that's yes. all we need to do is to, to make an impact. You may not make an impact. If you, if you make an impact, I always say, learn to pat yourself on the back. It's yes. not a profession where people are going to come and say to you every day, Oh, you did a good job. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, um, you, you know, when you see things uh, and you see changes that are occurring and you know that people can marry each other now mm -hmm. based on who they love and not mm -hmm. whether they're what we, we considered who should marry this, that is progress. And we mm -hmm. must never, ever forget the progress that we've made. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's been a really great time chatting with you, um, your wealth of knowledge and, and all the uh, alkaloids that I've heard from all my colleagues are absolutely true. And I want to thank you for uh, being such a gracious host, guest rather, and taking time out of your schedule. And, and I applaud everything that you're doing. And I, and I too have that same passion for the profession, because I think I mentioned to you the last time we spoke, uh, or maybe I didn't, but I am a product of this profession. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, I'll share this real brief story with you before we go. Um, I actually reunited with um, the social worker from my uh, teen years that made a big impact on my life. Oh, wow. Matter of fact, I reconnected with him and he's going to be actually a part of this project. Wonderful. And the thing that stood out to me most was that he went above and beyond. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of social workers coming through the foster care system. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I was lucky enough to you know, going to foster homes. The second one was where I grew up. But through, you know, time, they changed social workers. But out of all the social workers, I always remembered Mr. Dalton Murchison. Right. And when I decided to do this project, I said, I wonder if I could. And I started digging and digging and digging. And I found him. I located him. He's in South Carolina. I wrote him a letter. And for a long time, I didn't hear anything. But I know that he got it because he's. I made it was return receipt requested. Mm -hmm. I said, "Well, he got it," and I and I gave him my phone number, told him who I was, you know, what I was doing, and I didn't hear from him for a long time. And then I reached out to a a lady that had the same last name as him. Found out it was his daughter. Mm -hmm. She helped me connect with him, and eventually he called me. Okay. And we talked, and I was like, "You have no idea." the impact that you had, you know, when I was 16 years old, I got in some trouble. Mm -hmm. um, you got arrested riding in a stolen car mm -hmm. and I went to court. My foster mom and foster dad were there. My minister was there and my social worker, Mr. Dalton mm -hmm. Murchison was there. And I told him the story. I said, and I'll never forget that judge sat up on his bench and he said, 
Silas, he said, what you did was a really bad thing. He says, but I'm not going to sentence you to reform school. He said, because I see you got a strong support network. He said, you got your, both of your parents are here, your minister is here, and your social workers here. Mm -hmm. And he showed up on that particular day. And that, that really, it blew me away. Right. And, and, and then the other thing, when I was graduated from high school, I decided to go to um, a college upstate to take a tour. This man, at, on, on a Friday evening, after his shift was over, drove to my house, picked me up, drove me up to Cobble Skill, introduced me to the people I had to know, got to find out what the itinerary was. Then he gave me a bus ticket home and spending money. Th those two things by themselves. Right. I, 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 and, you know, when I talked to him and he said, you know what? He said, you almost got tears coming to my eyes. He right. said, this is why we go into the profession. Exactly. Exactly. And, 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 and he that, said, that pays to what I'm saying about the impact awards. You know, mm -hmm. how do we, there's so many stories like you just told mm -hmm. and how do we get those stories out? You yes. know, uh, mm -hmm. because it is about caring for someone and, and you don't do it. You, you know, when people reach out to you, sometimes you don't respond because you don't want them to feel like, okay, you, you got to do that. And you, you know, mm -hmm. the shyness. I'm so glad that you persisted and he finally came through because he needs to know. Mm -hmm. that he made that difference, right? Yes. And the mm -hmm. world needs to know that. There's stories mm -hmm. like that. I mean, that's the beauty of me being NASW president. I hear these stories and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my God, you know, um, if we could collectively wrap all of that energy up Mm -hmm. because you can impact one person's life, right? He could have, he could have not showed up. You could have mm -hmm. went to reform school, right? right. You mm -hmm. could have had a whole different life. And, and, yes. he, and he did what he did, you know, so we have to, we have to uplift those who do their job. I yeah. just don't think we do that enough. And mm -hmm. there's no money in the world that you can pay for that. You right? just, it's priceless. You can't put a price tag on that. This is Silas, your e-journalism social work advocate and host of the show. You've been listening to the Kelson on the Air Social Work Podcast. This and all other programs are available on the Apple iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Anchor podcast platforms. Go to any search engine and type in Kelson on the Air in the search window to hear this show in its entirety. Thank you for tuning in. This has been a Kelson Communications production.